All right, this old Clinton motor was a vertical shaft on a lawnmower. Tipped down so wide. And uh, it was junk. It still is junk, but I wanted the challenge and had some time on my hands, so I made this bracket under here. Turned it up on edge. There's where you used to put the oil in it when it was down vertical shaft wide. And uh, back here, it already had the casting lump for a dipstick, but it wasn't drilled or anything because it was made vertical from the factory. So I took a brass brazen rod, marked it for the right amount of oil, got a piece of combat boot leather on it for a gasket and a bolt and a washer. Combat boot's good for everything. I got it in the gas cap. That's what I seal the gas cap off with. I use it for everything. Hinges, good stuff. Made me a resistor plug out of a piece of gas line hose. The spark has to jump from here to the plug. Makes it hotter, makes it burn oil, makes it start good. Makes a resistor out of it. And I used to take it to shows, but that's a lot of work. I got all kinds of old motors I used to take, but I ain't gonna go through all that no more. I made a dipper on the rod, one of the rod bolts. I put a long bolt in it and a jam nut, filed it down like a knife blade and kept it off the oil pan. So it's getting plenty of oil slopped around. And on the carburetor, the cool thing was, all I had to do was take off a, a it had an adapter with four sets of holes. Two of them went in the engine, two of them went in the carburetor. Took it off, turned the carburetor a fourth of a turn. This air filter was up here like this when it was a vertical shaft. Turned it a fourth of a turn, turned the gas tank a fourth of a turn, sanded the points. It's got gobs of play in the main. You can actually lift the crank up and down. So I had to uh, get the points where they weren't uh, too close or too far. I had to find that happy medium. There again, it ain't meant to do nothing, just it was a challenge, something to do. And I got a Briggs and Stratton rope up on it. I couldn't find a Clinton head gasket for it, and I wasn't about to spend no money on one, so I took a old 5S Briggs and Stratton gasket, which looks almost the same, and cut the holes out in the ones that didn't match, and made a 5S Briggs gasket work on a Clinton. And I'll tell you, you can't do that, but if you stingy and inventive you can do anything like that saying if you got a cutting torch and a hammer anything will fit anything but now i've been tipping it so they might be flooded the float don't work right when it's tipped sideways you know that makes sense oh here's something else i made up here i made governor linkage for it but made an air vane governor in there governor flapper out of a piece of uh ductwork metal or no it was aluminum siding that's what it was there's a flapper in there like the old school and I made my bell crank out of coat hanger wire. You can see it down here moving. The linkage is hooked to the top to the carburetor. The underside goes to the butterfly and it truly does would govern if I needed it to. But just for showing and playing with, it, it don't have to have that. It may take a little bit to get it limbered up here, but I, it shouldn't be too bad. We did have it running earlier. Give it just a smidgen of gas. After it's good and warm, you can get it down to idling real, real slow because of that big heavy slug of aluminum I put on there. After it's super good and warm and you played with the mixture screws and got it just in its sweet spot, you take your foot and just twirl that wheel with your foot and it'll start. Do I have the gas on? Yeah, I do. Damn, I hear cop cars. Hope. <laughs> Surely the God and neighbors ain't done got riled up. Get it getting warm, I'm gonna show you how slow it'll idle with that, with that uh, aluminum flywheel, counterweight. Yeah, my trusty knife. I always break off the blade of my knife to grind it square on the end to use for a screwdriver. I don't need two blades. But I do need a screwdriver. Get her down kind of slow. And I made instructions on all the stuff. There's where I made my rod with the dipper on it. All in good, good crap. You can get her down there talking. If you play with the. I made a flat spot on the mixture screw somewhere that you. Yeah, a little flat spot so you can see where you got it. That's richening the low speed up a little bit. You hear it hitting every fourth time instead of every second time. 
But if I come back in here a little, find its sweet spot right there, then you can idle it way down. You can actually hear the tappets. You can hear the tappets touching the underside of the valves. That's what that high pitch sticking is. In fact, let me put this muffler back on. Come on, biatch. Don't be, don't be, don't be tripping on it. Oyster probably got all on this. But the main bearing on the sides of the flywheel is real worn, but I ain't gonna fix it. I ain't ran this for a good while. But listen, when I lift up on the crank, ordinarily the crank slammed down in the main bearings. When I lift up on it, it's gonna be up, down, up, down. Every time the explosion hits, you hear the knock and change. This is with no pull. I need to speed it up just here because it'll probably kill it, the friction of that. Now listen when I lift up on you, hear the noise change. Hear that knocking? That's because I'm lifting the crank up, the explosion's driving it down, so it's banging up and down in the main. Kind of like when you got a car and not pulling, not let, letting off in that sweet, easy spot. Total useless, wasted energy, but hey, what else would I have been doing? Sleeping or eating? So, hey, it was better than going to the gymnasium. Right there. I might go slower than that. It's good and hot now. Eh. I know it'll go slower now. I, I have had it, but like I said, it, I don't know where I clean the plug is. I don't know if the points got oil on them. This is a good time as any. I'm barely bump that back up. I'm going to climb up here and see if I can start it with my foot. He's like a crazy person, I tell you. <laughs> that boy, Gene, that boy. There we go. That's a cheat a little, folks. There we go. Put the choke all the way on. Back it up just a smidgen so it's got to be a little drawing. Kickstart my ass. And if you were poor, if you're one of them off the grid freaks that don't want to deal with society and all the rid of that and all that, Put your grindstone on there, and you always gotta come up on the underneath side for grinding. Put your grindstone on there, and get your lawnmower blade out before you hack the neighbors to death and sharpen the lawnmower blade. You know, get you know, you know, you know, you know, Spare spark plug, old AC, AC 45. That's back before everybody was all freaked out about. Oh my God. You gotta have the right heat range, you're gonna burn the top out of the piston. True, and something that's working, but if something like this is just sitting and running, it's not very critical. It's kinda like a cat's on a farm wagon, it really don't make a whole hell of a lot of difference. At nighttime you can watch the spark jumping between the between the spark plug and that little piece of wire. See that bolt has got a gap between it in the top of the plug and with that being on there that makes it jump same thing a resistor plug does inside the plug but uh, it's all just learning as a you know experimenting around a little bit the horizontals actually had a hole drilled here if this motor had originally been a horizontal it would have had a hole drilled here a flyweight governor inside running off the camshaft and an arm coming up here and going over to the carburetor but I got it rigged with a linkage and a homemade bell crank for shits and giggles. That's the end.